Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloodied, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis and the latest instalment of Short Story Saturday. That there was a poem uh, in Viticus, a very famous poem of course, one oft recited and recited even by um, Nelson Mandela in his years in prison in Robben Island, but it was written by William Ernest Henley. And what you may not know about William Ernest Henley is that he served as the inspiration uh, for Long John Silver in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson and Henley were really good friends. Unfortunately, Henley had lost his leg uh, to tuberculosis, a disease which eventually uh, killed him. Um, and speaking of uh, Long John Silver and Robert Louis Stevenson, that brings us to today's short story. Now, just a little bit about Stevenson before we move in. He was born in Edinburgh in Scotland and educated there as well. And he was born in 1850. And you know him, of course, for writing such works as Treasure Island, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, Kidnapped, etc., uh, etc. Et um, he was well-traveled. Uh, also, he was quite sickly. And he died at the very young age of only 44 uh, on the island, uh, in the islands of Samoa. So our story today comes from a book called Fables. And it's funny because I, I did a Friday freebie yesterday where there was also a short story called The Bottle Imp by, um, by Robert Louis Stevenson. And uh, today, as I say, the collection is Fables and I'll leave the link for it down below. Let's have a look at the story. Fables by Robert Louis Stevenson 1. The Persons of the Tale After the 32nd chapter of Treasure Island, two of the puppets strolled out to have a pipe before business should begin again and meet in an open place not far from the story. "'Good morning, Captain,' said the first, with a man-of-war salute and a beaming countenance. "'Ah, Silver,' grunted the other. "'You're in a bad way, Silver.' "'Now, Captain Smollett,' remonstrated Silver, Duty is duty, and as I knows, and none better. But we're off duty now, and I can't see no call to keep up the morality business. You're a damned rogue, my man, said the captain. Come, come, captain, be just, returned the other. There's no call to be angry with me in earnest. I'm only a character in a sea story. I don't really exist. Well, I don't really exist either, says the, cap says the captain, which seems to meet that. I wouldn't set no limits to what a virtuous character might consider argument, responded Silver, but I'm the villain of this tale, I am, and speaking as one seafaring man to another, I want to know is, what I want to know is, what's the odds? Were you never taught your catechism, said the captain? Don't you know there is such a thing as an author? Such a thing as an author, returned John derisively, and who better than me, and the point is, if the author made you, he made Long John, and he made Hans and Pew and George Merry, not that George is up to much, for he's little more than a name, and he made Flint, what there is of him, and he made this here mutiny. You keep such a work about, and he had Tom Red Roof shot, and well, if that's an author, give me Pew. Don't you believe in a future state, said Smollett, do you think there's nothing but the present story paper? Well, you don't really know for that, said Silver, and I don't see what it's got to do with it anyway. What I know is this. If there is such a thing as an author, I am his favourite character. He does me fathoms better and he does you fathoms. He does, and he likes doing me. He keeps me on deck mostly all the time, crutch and all, and he leaves you measling in the old, where nobody can't see you nor wants to. And you may lay to that. 
if there is an author, by thunder, but he's on my side, and you may lay to it. I see he's giving you a long rope, said the captain, but that can't change a man's convictions. I know the author respects me. I feel it in my bones. When you and I had that talk at the blockhouse door, who do you think he was for? My man. And don't he respect me, cried Silver. Ah, you shouldn't have heard me putting down my mutiny. George, Mary and Morgan and that lot. No longer ago in last chapter. You heard something then. You'd have seen what the author thinks of me. But come now, do you consider yourself a virtuous character clean through? God forbid, said Captain Smollett solemnly. I'm a man that tries to do his duty and makes a mess of it as often as not. I'm not a very popular man at home, Silver, I'm afraid. And the captain sighed. Ah, says Silver. Then how about this sequel of yours? Are you to be Captain Smollett just the same as ever? And not very popular at home, says you? And if so, why it's Treasure Island over again by thunder. And I'll be Long John, and Pew'll be Pew. And we'll have another mutiny as like as not. Or are you to be somebody else? And if so, why? What the better are you? And what the worse am I? Why, well, look here, my man, returned the captain. I can't understand how this story comes about at all, can I? I can't see how you and I, who don't exist, should get to speaking here and smoke our pipes for all the world like reality. Very well. Then, who am I to pipe up with my opinions? I know the author's on the side of good. He tells me so. It runs out of his pen as he writes. Well, that's all I need to know. I'll take my chance upon the rest. It's a fact he seemed to be against George Merry, Silver admitted musingly, but George is little more than a name at the best of it, he added, brightening. And to get into soundings for once, what is this good? I made a mutiny, and I been a gentleman of fortune. Well, but by all the stories you ain't no such saint. I'm a man that keeps company very easy, even by your own account. You ain't. And to my certain knowledge, you're a devil to haze. Which is which? Which is good and which is bad? Ah, you tell me that. Here we are in stays, and you may lay to it. We're none of us perfect, replied the captain. That's a fact of religion, my man. All I can say is, I try to do my duty, and if you try to do yours, I can't compliment you on your success. And so you was the judge, was you? said Silver derisively. I would be both judge and hangman for you, my man, and never turn a hair, replied the captain. But I get beyond that. It mayn't be sound theology, but it's common sense, and what is good is useful too, or there or thereabout, for I don't set up to be a thinker. Now where would a story go if there was no virtuous characters? If you go to that, replied Silver, where would a story begin if there wasn't no villains? Well, that's pretty much my thought, said Captain Smollett. The author has to get a, a story, that's what he wants, and to get a story and to have a man like the Doctor, say, given a proper chance, he has to put in men like you and Hans. But he's on the right side, and you mind your eye, you're not through this story yet. There's trouble coming for you. What'll you bet? asked John. Much I care if they ain't, replied I returned the captain. I'm glad enough to be Alexander Smollett, bad as he is, and I thank my stars upon my knees that I'm not silver. But there's the ink bottle opening to quarters. And indeed the author was just then beginning to write the words chapter thirty three. That was great fun. What a lovely little treat for those who love Treasure Island. I have to say it was a new one for me. I didn't know it existed until a few weeks ago. Um, and what a nice idea to have uh, two of your characters uh, discussing philosophy, if you like. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And what, what two great characters to have. Uh, the opposing sides of Captain Alexander Smollett and Long John Silver, or Barbecue to his mates. Um, yeah, it was it was really good fun, and I hope I hope you enjoyed it. And I don't know, there are probably other examples. Um, I'm thinking of um, oh gosh, uh, the two characters from Hamlet and 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 uh, the play uh, where they are talking, Guildenstein and somebody or other. I'm going to have to check it. That's right, Rosencrantz and Guildenstein are uh, characters from Hamlet and they're in a play, uh, of course, by uh, Tom Stoppard. The full name, of course, is Rosencrantz and Guildenstein uh, are dead. 
Um, and uh, interesting fact, actually, is uh, I don't know if you know it, but Tom Stoppard uh, was uh, Czech. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, it doesn't sound like he has a very Czech name. Well, he doesn't because he was adopted uh, by an Englishman, but his uh, real father and uh, his mother were Czech and they were refugees from Czechoslovakia who escaped to, I can't remember if it was Singapore or India, but anyway, that's a digression. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that short story and uh, look forward to seeing you all next time. Do take care, everybody. Bye. Better <laughs>